Well, I hope that you are enjoying the beauty of this season. Icicles, snowflakes, and if you listen, the continuous singing of birds, even on a cold morning like we've just had today. It's always around this time of year that my husband James comes to me and says, well, you're going to be gone during the day, so I am going to clean the carpet. I've got time to do that. I don't have anywhere I have to go. You know, the rivers are a little frozen up almost. And I'll say, okay, sounds good to me. I'm sure they need it. As my day goes on, I forget about James cleaning the carpet. I don't think about that here's my husband moving all of our furniture by himself. I don't think about him in there cleaning all the dog hair and such off of our carpet. I don't think about what he does to make sure it's dry by the time I get home. But the day progresses on, and when I get home and walk into our living room, which is what he usually focuses on cleaning, most of all, the whole room has been reconfigured. The furniture is in a new pattern. And I look at him and say, usually, I like it. He always reminds me, it's good for the carpet. I repeat back to him, it's good for us. Because there's nothing like sitting down in your favorite chair and seeing the world from a whole new vantage point. Change the room that you spend a lot of time in, and it's like your brain begins to grow bigger. You can think in larger ways and think about things that you never imagined you could think of. If you haven't had that experience, I sort of compare it to deleting all your presets on your radio and then having to go and explore freely what kind of music you like to listen to, what kind of news you like to listen to, what kind of radio shows you like to listen to. It's like erasing all your favorites in your computer. Because because now you start from scratch, and you just may happen upon the most beautiful thing that you didn't realize was out there. This is the pressure point that is happening in our gospel for today. It's a pressure point for the people of Nazareth, but it's a pressure point for us as well who hear this gospel today. Because this guy Jesus has come into town, into his hometown, and he is moving all the furniture around. He is erasing all the presets, and this is what is occurring. Now, I want to remind you of last Sunday's gospel, which is the first half of what we see happening today. Jesus has picked up the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and is the reader in the synagogue, his home synagogue where he grew up. And the words are these. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, those who are in prison, to heal those who are blind, to give them recovery of sight, and last but not least, to pronounce the Lord's Sabbath over all 
the rest of God, of it all. And then we pick up with this Sunday's gospel, where we heard last week Jesus said at the end, today the scripture's been fulfilled. In other words, this is what I'm here for, to bring about God's work of doing this. I am God's love embodied and will do these things. The people in Nazareth have their presets. They have their way of looking at the world. Here is Jesus. We know him. He's Mary's boy. He grew up in our town. He's been a carpenter. He hung out with my family. And this is wonderful that he's been doing these things and that he says these things. But here's the question. What's he going to do for us? What's he going to do for our lives? This is where Jesus moves the furniture around. This is where Jesus unleashes all the favorites. He says, it's been this way for a long time. Way back in the prophets, God wasn't just taking care of his own family, the family of Abraham. But way back in the prophets when the people of Israel weren't having faith in God, God worked outside the boundaries, did some beautiful things in other countries. Surprise! This is what I'm here to do as well. I'm here not just to call the people of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham, to God, but to proclaim the good news of God to all peoples. Can you see this? This is obviously the point where the people in Nazareth aren't willing to have all their presets set aside. They don't want all the furniture moved around. They're not at a point where they're willing to see the big, beautiful mission that God has in mind through his son. What about us? Are we willing to let God move our presets, to move our favorites, to move the furniture around in the way we look at the world through his son, through the love that his son brings to this world? How many people do you think this week will join us online for worship? How many people do you think will come to a centering prayer group online on Tuesday? We've got two of those. How many many do you think will join in on a discipleship group online this afternoon or Wednesday morning? How many will join Mike on College Online on Wednesday night? Do you ever think about that? Do you ever wonder about that? Do you care about that? God is doing some beautiful things online in our church, through many churches. Are we able to allow our presets to be extinguished so that we can see the beauty of God working in ways that we hadn't imagined before? This coming week, how will you live out your discipleship? 
The love of God has come to us in Jesus Christ, and we've been called to go and share that love. You can put it in words however you like it. You can put it into the words of Jesus today that we've been called to go and proclaim the good news. We've been called to go and bear healing. And we've been called to go and bear a message of freedom and to physically help people be freed from things that bind them. We're called to go and embody God's peace and shalom, however you want to do it, however you want to say it. How will you and I go and be the church instead of think about coming to church? What will that look like? Will we not think about that? Or will that be a central part of our week? Will we allow our presets which I know for myself are true. Sometimes I've waited on a church program to get me to the point where I'm going to go share the love of Jesus with somebody. That's not discipleship. That's membership. That's not the big, beautiful mission of God that we see beginning in Jesus in Nazareth. Are you and I allowing, willing to allow our presets to fade so that we can have a more expansive view of what God seeks to do through those people of faith in the world today? Last but not least, my question for us is, what about community groups like CVAN? Are those on your mind as a disciple, a follower of Jesus, as a person that is to share the love of God? What about groups like CCM? What about groups like Habitat? Those kind of ministries in our community are on the ground. As congregations, as we partner with them, you and I are able to touch better than in any other way those who are in need in our community, because those people are physically out there day by day doing that. Do you think about those groups? Do you pray about those groups? Do you seek to think about how the love of God might be realized through you as you participate in the work of those groups? Or do you put them over here? We've been collecting things for CVAN this week, this month. We've got a very small collection. Perhaps our presets are such that we can't see the beautiful work that our God is doing and can do through community partners. If the love of God compels us, to go there and to risk going there. If my three questions for you make you uncomfortable, maybe make you angry, it's because I'm trying to move the furniture around, the presets around, and to remind us all of that larger vision that God has for us as his people. Our experience in a pandemic has forced us to move the furniture around, has forced us to deal with our presets as Calvary Lutheran Church, as a church that thinks about ourselves as coming to the building and being in church, and that is church. We've had to transition like all other churches into thinking about ourselves as hybrid and more communal and fulfilling the priesthood of all believers. God's beautiful work of blessing and loving the world and transforming the world through his son is active in every generation. 
the question becomes, will we participate? Will we allow the love of God to help us move the furniture in our lives around, in our churches around, our presets around, so that our vision of the world can get aligned with God's? God's love calls us to go and to share that love with everyone. If we do this, we are going to continue to be a part of something so very beautiful for the world. We are going to be a part of the dream that God has for our world. That all may know that they are beloved, embraced, and that they are something beautiful in their Father's eyes. Amen.